Today is about power. In the booklets that you have, there are a plethora of scripture verses. In my estimation, there is one that is most significant, which is missing. I beg you to write it down. It's Colossians chapter 1, verses 13 to 14. And maybe it's there, I just don't know where it is, but I can't find it. This that passage, in my mind, is the context of everything that Jesus has done in his death and resurrection and wants to do for a good number of us right now, today, in this place. Paul writes, he has, this is God, the Father, he has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. That's the passage that I would suggest from a pastor's perspective is most important. Why do we need, why this? Why am I so adamant and passionate about doing this here and inviting people here and bringing John here to share this? Because we desperately need glasses My driver's license is a box that's checked that says needs corrective lenses. <laughs> we all do. We can't see. We need desperately a biblical vision of reality. I need to know where I am, what kind of world I live in, and what it is that Jesus has done in his passion and his death and his resurrection. So the image in my mind is a lot of us live our lives as if we're walking on the beach at Lake Michigan. You're not. It's more like you and I woke up and it's June 6, 1944, and you're at Omaha, not Nebraska. It's D-Day and we don't know it. And so for me, it's more than providential that we're here right now, shortly before we enter into Holy Week, because I think a lot of us think we know what he did. And I don't think we have a clue. Yes, thanks be to God, God is a good father and he is merciful, but people, he is powerful beyond all telling. And Desmond Doss's life didn't change because he made some choices. Desmond's life's, Desmond Doss's life changed because he got delivered. He got rescued. He got transferred from one kingdom to another kingdom. And you and I, every single one of us, lives in one of those two kingdoms. John's going to talk about this at length. So let me set this, the table, if I can, for John by sharing with you just a short excerpt from, hands down, the greatest book I have ever read as a priest. It's called The Crucifixion. This is uh, what it says. No one is capable of being captain of his own soul master of his own fate. Each of us is worked upon by unconscious impulses of which we are not even aware and over which we have little or no control. Paul, unlike the typical American, does not think in terms of autonomous human beings. Paul proudly identifies himself as a slave of Christ. No one is free in the domain of this world as it is. Please hear this. Either we must live our lives in the clutches 
of the soul-destroying powers, or we are delivered into the obedience of faith. Paradoxically, the new life in Christ can be called both slavery, the service of God, and freedom. The clear implication here is that there is no way for the human being to move from the domain of sin to the domain of God's righteousness unless there is an invasion of the kingdom of sin from outside. The domain of sin leads to death. Its goal and purpose is death. There is no way out of this downward spiral of disillusion. That is the bad news, people. You and I belong to a race which, by our own choice, has been sold into slavery. It's because of that that the good news is so good. If it weren't for that, who cares? But because of that, what he's done in his death and resurrection means so much. You and I are stuck. I can't get out of where I am on my own, and neither can you. I must be transferred from one place to another. That's why I need power and someone to come from outside. But here's the good news. You have been set free from the domain of sin and have become slaves to God. And your fruit is holiness, and the end is eternal life. Being a slave of righteousness and a slave of obedience will sound intolerable to most modern ears and probably to not a few of us who are here this morning. Slave? Me? I do whatever I want. That's called slavery. It takes hard mental work to enter Paul's thought world and to understand that these phrases do not describe a bondage to a harsh puritanical code imposed upon us by a tyrannical outside force. Paul means the opposite. The gospel of Christ means precisely deliverance from tyrannical outside forces into a realm of light and life where the obedience of faith is the only natural and joyful way to live. So why unbound? Because many of us have a horribly deformed understanding of reality. And I think many of us live our lives as if I could only try harder, I would be better. This is not so. The world can best be understood as being made up of two ages. There is the age of sin, capital S, and death. And there is the age of the lordship and the reign of Jesus. We end our prayers by saying Jesus is what? Jesus is what? Lord. People, that's not just a cute little add-on. He's Lord. He has invaded a kingdom. Why? To take back what is properly his. Not so that he can own it like a possession, that's what the tyrant wants to do. 
but so that you and I can step into his Father's kingdom, step into freedom, step into life. That's what this day's about. That's why I think Unbound's so important.